Shalom Brothers. Here's a 04 second gen Prius. If you got any of these codes, it's most likely the coolant control valve. The valve is used for cold start emissions. So if you don't replace it, you could still drive around with a check engine light like many other people do and nothing will happen. But since it is a three-way valve uh, and part of it goes into the heater core, if that somehow jams just perfectly, uh, you may not have heat. So I personally just want to replace mine because I'm tired of the check engine light. As far as getting the actual part itself, I would highly advise not to get one off Amazon or even like AutoZone. Any of those knockoff brand ones, they do not hold up at all. I'm cheap myself, but I decided to get an actual OEM Toyota one. As you see, this is a Denso part. That's pretty much what Toyota uses for all their sensors and all that. Um, I didn't get mine from the dealer, but I got it off eBay, someone who did purchase it from the dealer. And it is brand new and everything. Starting off, remove any of the clips, if you even have any. I don't, so I'm just going to yank out the beauty cover. Then undo these 12 mil bolts on both the brackets to the inverter. After you get the 12 mil bolts out of the brackets, lift the inverter just a little bit up right here so you can slide a spacer. Not much, but that gives you more room to dive in here. And then there's the actual valve down there and the connector on the right, the two hoses on the left, and there's another hose on the bottom of it. So starting off, uh, remove the connector and let's start working on those hoses. Grab your needle nose pliers, either the angled ones or the straight ones, and grab the hose clamp and move it off the thing. You see I removed the connector as well. Now you could yank the coolant line off of there, but then coolant's just going to start spilling everywhere. So if you don't have a uh, like hose clamps, I'd recommend just getting some vice grips, putting them in a dirty rag, and then clamping them on the hose. That's pretty much how it looks like, and next step will be to take off the hose. No matter which way you do this, you're still going to cause a mess. Um, as you see, there's a lot of coolant coming out of the valve itself. It didn't leak from the hose, obviously, because I pinched that off. But as soon as you take it off of that, I suggest you plunger it with your finger. And if you can see down there, I plugged it with something like this. I took just a hose and shoved a bolt through here, and it fits perfectly to jam in there. I mean, if you don't care, you can just let it flow out. Both of those hoses off and plugged the two valve ports with that. The hose on the bottom, I am unable to fully get off. I started to, but it's a little sticky. So there is a 10 millimeter bolt right there and right there. So you need to remove those to actually get the valve itself out. And I think then I'll be able to tilt it and have enough clearance to remove the bottom hose. And that 10 mil bolt is out. And the other one, I was wrong. It's not a 10 mil, it's a 12. But if you have a lot of extensions, just feed them down in there. Mine actually snapped off. I guess it's more of a stud going through that. But I could care less because there's still that one and that's what I'm going to hook it back up to. Undo the valve, take off both the bolts, and that way you can see down there is where the other hose clamp is. So you can actually get to it once you rotate the assembly. After you disconnect the bottom hose, it's pretty much ready to come out. And I added another spacer, that's as high as it will go, right there. And it's already pretty much out right now. All I have to do is just tug it up and take it out. This over here, when you first enter it, it goes this way. And then the final piece, it comes out like this. So shimmy it out because you still have to go over this big hose and that right there. Those are your two spots. I'm sure there's a different way to get it out, but just keep trying different ways and eventually it will come out. I wasn't able to really document 
taking it out. This is the new unit, and if you get it in this position, right, so it has a little bit of clearance there, the bracket goes in there. This big hose is the problem. If you use one hand to push it in, because obviously it's rubber, you push it in and then have that edge go over that, then you're golden. So just one hand, push this down, like tuck it in, and then get this over it. There's the bottom uh, plug and the hose is pinched down there. So once that's up, once you connect that, um, you obviously got your front two ones right there uh, and the connector and just bolt it down. And I'm not gonna obviously go over, it's pretty much reverse of taking it out. But I will show you how to refill the cooling system because regardless of how much you clamp it and whatnot, you're still going to lose a good amount of coolant. Real quick, if you somehow have goldfish brain like me and mix up your two hoses, which one goes on top or bottom, um, the one that goes on top will have a marking on it. It'll have a dot. It could be a white or yellow, but if it has that dot, it is the hose that goes on top of there, the top one. Everything's back together. The hoses are hooked up, the connector, the nut, uh, and both of the brackets. Um, right now, the most important thing is refilling the cooling system. So, this is for your radiator. Uh, this is for the inverter. We don't touch that because the inverter cooling system is completely separate. Our, all we're dealing with is the engine and the radiator. So, these are both of your options right here. You can get some Toyota coolant, or you can get some, as long as it's red or pink, no no green Shrek juice in here. That's, Toyotas are very picky about that. Make sure it's red or pink, or it says like, Asian vehicle like Toyota, or if it's directly from Toyota. Now, the process is, before you start the car, take off the radiator cap, and fill this up to the top. Start with that. So you see how the air bubbles are slowly coming up and the coolant's going down. You could also top off the overflow. I mean, there's literally nothing in there, but right down there, it has a full and a low mark. You can just get it in the middle for now. It doesn't matter as much. Just focus on filling up the radiator until it stops accepting coolant. Alright. Now once your radiator stops throwing up air bubbles and it can't fill up anymore, take the relay box and open that up and take out the right relay this one the top one and the bottom one don't touch any of these right here just the the, the, the bottom one and the top one just these two you want to take a wire or something to jump them so I'm gonna use just a regular speaker wire I got one stuck in there and then if I touch the bottom, top one Okay, so what's happening is, it's kicking on the, uh, the pump, I guess, slash valve, whatever you want to call it, it opens it up, so the coolant actually goes through it, because currently in there it's nothing but air, but that gets filled up. So if we look back down here, it sucked up that coolant, so what you want to do is you want to refill this back up and do that again, and basically... When you hook these up too, count to about 10 seconds, take them out, take this, refill the coolant, and do it all over again until it stops sucking in coolant. But do that before you start the car. After about 10 times of doing that, uh, stop, bubble stop coming out. So I think that's about it for that. I'm gonna top it off a little bit. And when you're doing that, when you're waiting, squeeze this hose, squeeze any other coolant hoses you can find. You, that'll help a lot. You'll get a lot more bubbles out. The last thing you want is having an air pocket in one of these. 
Um, the last step would be to start the car, but not normally, but start it in diagnostic mode. So that way the engine just keeps on running. Basically the battery doesn't kick on because, and then turn the heater on as well because the heater core, you want to get that cycling as well. You don't want any ear pockets in there. To put the car in diagnostic mode, I'm going to do a quick practice run right now and then I'll actually do it to show you. So you start with hitting this twice, so one, two, then you hit the gas, one, two, put your foot on the brake, put the car in neutral, let go of the brake, gas again, one, two, put it in park, the gas, one, two, and then put your foot on the brake and start the car like you would. So let's do this for real this time. One, two, the gas, one, two, put her in neutral, one, two, park, one, two, and then start. There we go. So right now it's running in diagnostic mode. I'm probably going to let it sit for about 10-15 minutes until it reaches operating temperature. But keep your eye on the coolant. Refill that if that runs dry. Uh, also blast the heater. My heater's all the way up right now to make sure the heater core's working. If you're not getting heat, uh, you most likely have an uh, air pocket in your heater core. But yeah, I hope that was helpful to some of you. And let's go Brandon.